I regularly get questions regarding why someone might lose weight on a reverse diet. And I can understand why people are confused about this, right? Because the point of a reverse is to slowly increase your calories over time. And we all know that in order to lose weight, you need to reduce your calories. You need to create that calorie deficit. So what gives here? Why would someone lose weight while increasing their calories on a reverse diet? One is that if you're just coming off a diet, you may not have reached your maintenance calories yet. So what do I mean by this? Well, imagine that you were eating about 2,000 calories before your diet, and then you cut calories down to, let's say, 1,400. So theoretically, you're in a 600 calorie deficit. By the time you finished your diet, your metabolism may have adapted and slowed down just a little bit, so your maintenance calories may be at right around 1900 now, but if you start a reverse without jumping your calories up first, and you start from that 1400 with just, let's say, a 50 calorie increase, you're still going to be in a pretty big calorie deficit. So it might take you more than a month or two to finally get your calories up to where you're at maintenance level again. So throughout that whole time between the end of your diet when you started your reverse and the month or two that it takes to get back up to your maintenance calories, you'll be continuing to lose weight, just like you did while you were on the diet. The second reason that you might be losing weight on your reverse diet is that your metabolism may be increasing at a faster rate than your calories are increasing. And this can be especially true if you just came off a diet. So when you're on a diet, we know that often if that diet is super aggressive, Thyroid hormones will drop, testosterone may drop, leptin may drop, and these things will all slow your metabolism down a little bit, causing you to adapt to those lower calories. Now, when you increase calories through a reverse, you may restore some of those hormones, bringing metabolism back up to a more normal level. Now, this can increase your basal metabolic rate a little bit, but when we're talking about metabolism increasing substantially, most of all, we're talking about calories burned through exercise and something called NEAT. So NEAT just stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis. NEAT basically refers to non-planned activities. So it's not organized exercise like something like a triathlon or actually going out and running or swimming would be. It's more like the fidgeting, pacing, kind of how you're posturing your body and all of those spontaneous things. So when you drop calories on a diet, NEAT can decrease. But in some people, when you increase calories through reverse dieting, NEAT can increase a lot. So the energy expended through the stuff like fidgeting, pacing, maybe taking a walk after work because you have so much energy and are less lethargic, those calories that you burn can really go up. And they can go up a lot faster than the rate at which you're adding more calories through food into your diet. So if that happens, this can put you back into a calorie deficit, especially if you combine that with having more energy for your workouts. So when you're training, you're expending a lot more energy because you're feeling good and you're able to put that much more weight onto the bar and you're able to go that much further you know, in your mile or your two mile run. So you can see how together that would really increase the amount of calories you expend, putting you back in a deficit. And the third reason that someone might lose weight on a reverse diet is that before that reverse diet starts, you're eating more than you realize. So let's say that you're trying to stick to a 1200 calorie diet. That's the number you have in your mind. And five days out of the week, you're pretty close to that. But let's say that maybe when you go to scoop that peanut butter out of the jar, you get a little bit extra. Or when you go to pour that bowl of cereal, it's just piled a little tiny bit high. All of those calories can add up. So maybe you're eating 1,300 calories or closer to 1,350 those five days of the week. Well, then two days of the week, because you're so hungry, you overeat more than that. So maybe those days of the week, you're closer to like 22 or 2,400 calories. And going over like this is a lot easier to do than you might realize. But by the end of the week, your calorie average is closer to 1,500. Now when you're reversing, things are going pretty well. You're finally able to stick to those numbers. Just a little bit of food makes all the difference. So when you get to about 1,400, 1,450 calories, you start losing weight. You're actually in a deficit because you're able to stick to those numbers. Now in your mind, you're like, gosh, I wasn't losing weight on 1,200 calories but now I'm losing weight at 1400 or 1450, that's amazing. Maybe my body needed the extra food. But in reality, you were eating more than you thought before you started the reverse diet, and now you're just actually able to adhere to the new calories. Also consider that of the three scenarios I talked about, 
any combination of these things could be happening. Maybe you were eating a little bit more before starting that reverse than you realize. But also, maybe you're a really great responder to extra calories and you're able to burn a lot more through meat and exercise, putting yourself back in a deficit. And also, maybe you're still coming off that diet, so maybe you haven't reached your maintenance calories yet. So it might not be any one of these three things in isolation. It could easily be two or even all three of those things. So those are the three reasons you might lose weight while on a reverse diet. No, it's not magic. Your body isn't defying the laws of thermodynamics. It's just science. There is a plausible explanation for this.